But uh, LeBron, we've seen you lock down uh, people in the fourth quarter many times, but rare that you're called upon to start the second half on Schroeder. What was the thought process? Uh, well, we ended the half, um, you know, the right way. We closed the half the right way, and um, we started with our defensive intensity, you know, and I uh, just wanted to try to take the challenge against Schroeder. He's, he's one of the fastest guys we've got in our league, and if, once he gets down, he gets ahead, uh, full of steam down, you know, he's finished at the rim, and he was kicking our butts in the first half, so... You know, just try to use my intelligence uh, against him, you know, with the help of my teammates and uh, just try to do a good job on him. And you know, I feel like if I can turn him down, turn his water down some, then it'll have an effect on the rest of those guys and also affect on us offensively. So, um, and, and it was just that exactly what happened. And he was not beating you on the dribble. Nah, I mean, listen, I take a lot of pride in my defensive abilities. Um, no matter if I'm guarding a point guard, no matter if I'm guarding a power forward or a center or a shooting guard or a small forward, I take the challenge. My teammates asked me to take the challenge. I wanted the challenge. And, uh, you know, I was just there for it. So, you know, but more importantly, my teammates was there for me on the other end. You know, they started knocking down shots, especially in that third quarter, you know, and in the fourth quarter. So it allowed me to just focus on my defense. On the perimeter, a minute to go, he got you, but then you got him on, on the chase down. Did you learn anything from that, that prior possession that, that helped you on the, on the chase down? The second no, round? I mean, listen, the, the prior possession, he threw it high off the glass, and I couldn't go get it, you know. And um, But I was right there and made him take a tough shot. But... He's a great finisher on the second one. I just try to stay body to body. And, uh, you know, I was able to get my hand on the ball a little bit before he was able to rise and allow me to go up and just pin it on the backboard. So, um, you know, we was in a position right there where we stayed home on everybody. We didn't want to give up no threes. And it was, you know, up to me to just try to, you know, contain him as much as I could. Take wag intentional being that we're in Atlanta and <laughs> uh, No, I don't do intentional stuff, but that's pretty cool if you want to write that. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah, makes sense. LeBron, Go ahead. Um, how tough of a cover? Because like, people don't necessarily know him outside of like hardcore NBA circles, but how tough of a cover? How athletic is that shooter guy? You have to cover on a base like uh, that. I mean, just you know, anytime you go, you're covering a small guy like that that's very fast, it's very challenging. You know, his ability to – he's very shifty. His right to left crossover, his left to right crossover. And once he, once he gets a hip on you, he does a great job of, of keeping you there and, and finishing at the rim, which you saw a lot in the second quarter. Uh, where he just uh, kept getting bucket after bucket. So, you know, I just try to use my intelligence. I, I know um, pros and cons of every player on every team of what they like to do, uh, what they would not, what not like to do on a possession. And then, uh, you know, I just use my uh, my intelligence on that and, and live with the results. LeBron, 10 straight victories. Can you talk to us about the player Kevin Love during this recent stretch and how big he's been for your team? Uh, I mean, listen, Kev has uh, been huge for us. And, uh you know, we want that to continue, but, you know, when he's not, you know, feeling, you know, great, like, you know, in a Philly game, we got other guys that pick it up, and that's what we need to have. Kev is our all-star power forward, and we expect big things out of him, uh, you know, but if he has a night off, if I have a night off, or whatever the case may be, we got guys that can pick it up. So, you know, that's what it's about. This is a collective team effort. You talked about using intelligence to, to guard Schroeder, but what is, I guess, the key? I mean, is it taking away angles? How, how do you approach guarding him? Uh, I can't give that up. <laughs> I knew you said that. No, I can't give that up. <laughs> the block you had on, on Prince, um, were you intentionally blocking it that way to keep it in play, or can you just walk me through the play as much as you can remember? Um, no, nah, it's just the way it happened. Um, you know, I figured, <laughs> see, you guys trying to break my, my mind down too much right now. This is not what this is about. <laughs> um, I figured if I forced him left, um, that he would have to, I, w I cut off his right hand, he would have to try to shoot it with his left hand, uh, which is uh, played by the percentages. It's, uh, uh, the percentages are way down for him. Um, and he couldn't get all the way to the rim because I was on his hip. So um, once he picked the ball up, he only had two steps, and I just read his feet. And uh, wherever the ball was going to go, that's where it was going to take me. So I'm mean, not planning on to go a little bit higher than what it did. And um, you know, I just blocked it right to D-Wade. Run as the streak reaches 10 now. How, how do you guys avoid not talking about it or thinking about it? Uh, well, we know it's 10 because uh, everyone talks about it and everyone's on social media and things of that nature. Um, but we understand how we got here. And that's defense and that's the way we've been playing offensively. Um, you know, for to win 10 plus games in any, if you win 10 plus games in any sport, major sport, that's very, very good. Uh, but we don't want to be complacent, and we come, you know, Saturday, it's another struggling team, and uh, we understand that, but we understand we're going to get their best um, in Memphis, so we look forward to the challenge. You, do, you guys do have a couple of days off. What are some things that you need to work on as a team to get better and prepared for Saturday? Uh, rest. We owe 
Anything else? LeBron, LeBron, uh, if last game were the ejection shoes, what are tonight's shoes called? Um, <laughs> I don't have a name for them just yet. You know, I, I at least had an opportunity to kind of calm down, cool down, shower and everything before I went home and made up a name for them. So uh, <laughs> give me that. Give me, wait till I get home. I'll be home in a few hours. We want to make this the most successful toy drive ever here at the Q. And I'm challenging you guys to kick us off to see who can bring back the most toys. You guys ready? Go! <laughs> Whoa, Sir Cece, this is really great. But where's Moondog? The Cavs and Monsters Toy Drive, presented by Step 2, takes place at Cavs and Monsters Home Games between now and December 9th. Donate and help make this holiday season one to remember for children in our community.